There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Sign stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories. Yes. Is this the beginning? You looking at my back, boy. As I'm trying to cut all the way through this jungle. <laughs> looking at my back. <laughs> Filling the steps I take in the mud. That's what you do, Eddie. That's what I do? Come behind me. I I'm, behind there. You I'm I cutting get, it down. And I get in the mud. You get in the mud. Maybe I was just trying to smoke your head. What's going on? Why did you... Uh, you're, is this, uh, this your new Easter? What's going on here with your head? Oh, you're talking about dyeing my hair? You dyed your hair. A couple it's called colors. a mi- yeah. It's called a middle life crisis. Midlife crisis, in a way. But I'm all, I'm not there yet. I'm still not saying 40s middle. No, I think I'm gonna make it to a solid 92. Oh, you think you're gonna make it to 92? Yeah, because I'm gonna be mostly robot. I'm gonna be replaced as much as humanly possible with exoskeletons, anything that I can science wise if that's allowed. Yeah, I mean, I got a feeling it's you could- two huge new tits. Oh, that'll Yay. help you because that's something to live for. See, the thing is, first off, first correction I'm making, going to add some top meat to these breasts, right? Oh. So I can get some benefactor. Round them a little bit. Oh, round them. No, they need rounding. Yeah. And then, like, then I can get a benefactor that will pay for all of the other things for me to get. Robot legs, robot hands, robot you cock. You are the benefactor. I know, but th- then at first, I'm sucking this guy's dick. I'm having crazy sex with him. I'm fucking giving him. Obviously, the goal is you give me new breasts. I give you a titty fuck anytime you ask, right? Because that's the arrangement. Okay. And I will do that for him, right, over and over and over again until then I'm obviously mostly robotic. Then I kill him, okay. take over his home. All right? This is a, this is a plan, Eddie. Uh, and that's why I dyed my hair. Oh. No, I dyed my hair because I, uh, as I'm, I, I'm giving a New Orleans funeral to the rest of my hairs. Oh, is that what's going on? They're dying, and so I'm going to party my way as they, as the hairs jump from the front of my head mm-hmm. to the top of my asshole. I'm trying to look at how much breast implants cost for a man. I mean, I think that there's They're no only difference. Only five hundred. You could do this on your own. You don't need this other guy. Oh, yeah, I can put that on credit. I can put those on layaway. Yeah. I think you can get one, and That's- then get the other later on. You could get them both at once. I'm just saying. I'm not gonna kind of drop it. I want to see how one works. How one feels. I wonder if you can get a temp. That would be great. If honestly, I should just wear a, a bra. Get a bra with two fake boobies. Glue them to yourself. Okay. Shave your breasts first. Of course, you're gonna have to shave them. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's why I think don't think this is gonna work because if you try to titty fuck someone, it could start a fire. The thing is also if you shave my tits now, right? They just look like breasts. Yeah. I wouldn't need. You might not need this surgery. Welcome to Side Stories. My name's Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> I'm sitting here with Ed Larson. I don't know. I, I'm just saying I would like, I'm looking for investors in me. Yeah. And so anybody that wants to kind of come and set up shop in here, this is a fixer upper. All right. I got a bad thumb. This has got to be replaced. My fucking shoulders hurting me. Mm-hmm. All right. Honestly, uh, I'm permanently hard. Really? Yeah. Maybe that could be your new thumb. Honestly, it's really hurting my... It's hurting because it's rubbing against my zipper. Oh, and you can't jerk off because your jerk-off hand is out of commission. Look at this. I've been having to use my fucking... I've been having to use the couch. Really? Yeah. That's one hot couch. Get that thing fake breasts. Imagine that. How wonderful that would be. Right on the armchairs. You can just sleep on them all day. God, that's fucking an awesome idea. Yeah. And you could just stick your face in between yeah. them as you're sleeping. Yeah, it's like, oh, what's Whoa. that, honey? Take out the trash? Maybe I'll just sit here and... <laughs> Man, wow, dude. That's the fucking... Fuck all this. Fake tits Still for your the couch. couch. That's what Copywritten is. TMR with a circle Last around podcast it. on the left. LPOTL. We're putting that down there. Fake tits with the couch. couch That's tits. incredible. Yes. Couchtits.org. Oh, my God. Natalie's never going to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Side Stories is crushing it this week. Already we're coming up with new stuff. Uh, got a lot of stuff to get to today. First of all... Uh, oh, oh, can I just say something real quick? We can go past it? You're allowed to talk as much as you want and as long as you want. I would like to give a nice congratulations to the Florida Panthers for winning the Stanley Cup. First time ever. Miami is one hockey, and I'm very happy for them. 
That is all. I just wanted to say I love you, Panthers. He's allowed to have this I just, male I, I moment. Don't even, I didn't even watch a second of hockey this year. I'm just happy they won. This is Florida love. This isn't even hockey love. You're allowed. If I sure. can be honest, fuck hockey. Wow. Yeah, I don't even care about hockey. I don't give a shit about hockey. But how I never does this help it. Florida? How does this help the Santos voters? How does it help them? How do? What do you mean? They already dropped the Stanley Cup in the ocean. <laughs> It's not even 24 hours since they won. How well, funny. at least they don't play football. Because <laughs> they would have dropped the ball. I, I don't know, man. Well, great. Honestly, congrats, Florida Panthers. Yeah. You go get them. Go puck yourself. Go, You go out there and you go. I hope that. You slap those pucks around. Right? Yeah, they, are. <laughs> they just threw it in the ocean. That yeah, is the dumbest thing. Them. That is dropped. the single dumbest thing I've <laughs> I've ever seen. That's very stupid. Uh, can I take what he said back? <laughs> congrats, fellas. Yeah, because he just threw much. the Stanley like up into the ocean. Do they all drink out of it and piss and shit in it? You know what? I don't even know any of their names. Yeah, God knows. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, 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 that's like Slobodan Milenkovic, and then you got the other. I keep saying that name. <laughs> There's another one over there. Yeah, they're all Chechnyan. They're going with him. Like I'm just happy to see. Wow. Yeah, they just threw it in the water. That's they just really threw it stupid. In the fucking ocean. Really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's why Florida doesn't have nice things. Yeah, that's why it, they are going to end up becoming the Atlanta Panthers. <laughs> is what is going to happen. Uh, all Congrats, right. Congrats, boys. Good Good work. Thank I, you for bringing it back to Miami. We're uh, bringing it to Miami. Good work, guys. Now, I uh, covered the Karen Reed trial clumsily yeah. last week, and I did make one, an actual mistake. Now, the only reason why I want to bring it up is because we are now in the middle of the verdict. Like, they're doing the verdict finding area right it now. It could be the out jur- by the, jury's the time this out. episode comes By the out. time, honestly, it's what's going to happen. By the time this episode's going to happen, we're going to know whether or not she is innocent or guilty. But I have got a really good, uh, the, the main correction I wanted to give was that it wasn't Karen Reed that texted has long to die in the cold. That is what I thought. And I was confused because I'd listened to a lot of coverage. I did listen to hours of coverage, but oh, I So she didn't write that? No, I was that's why I that but honestly, that's why I was confused. I was like, why is there an even issue here? So it was written by Jennifer McCabe, who's a friend of the Albert family, mm-hmm. which were the guys that owned that house that no one came out or was interviewed in, or like the idea of where the mysterious party happened with the big connections to the Boston That's police. a big fuck up, Henry. Uh, yes, it's a very big fuck up. That's- Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, but that's why I don't normally do this. So, so she's got to be innocent. I there's a lot there, but the key is is that she was very very intoxicated. Oh so yeah. So they're saying a little bit is that we don't know. Could be a group murder. They that we're saying we don't know what happened, and then also the weird stuff about the text exchange um, between the Albert family. There's the guys that own the house showed that one of the uncles told everyone to say that the guy never went into the house. Brian Albert, cop house owner, replies. Exactly. For two years, Brian's son, Colin, a known hothead, was kept off of witness reports. After texts between him and his sister proved he was there that night, he started to appear back in the statements, which is also interesting. Also, she was sending weird, flirty texts, as Karen Reed, Mm -hmm. to another one of his buddies, John O'Keefe, one of the, the man that was murdered in this instance. And so the, it's, it's really weird. It's just, it's very complicated, but that was the main fact. Everything else I was fine on. Yeah. But I just got that one fact wrong. No, no, I'm glad you corrected yourself. Yeah, because I, I tried to, look at me. I'm just this incredible, present, moisturized, so moist. I My head's on a swivel and I'm just so, I'm here and you're blessed to have me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be working on my self-esteem. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You look fine. <laughs> it's the immediate correction that's worse. The immediate correction actually doesn't make me feel better. Now, th- this is a... <laughs> you look like you celebrate Feaster instead of Easter. <laughs> <laughs> this is called and, uh, the hair dye is literally just trying to feel something. All right, and just trying to feel something, trying to feel inspired, trying to feel full energy. You know what? You know where you see the difference? Yeah. I went down to Melrose with Jackie to go for good put costume shopping, so we would go look like dumb stuff for costume shopping. Yeah. And normally, when I'm on Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. I'm treated like a narcotics officer. Yeah. Like I, I they view me, they look at me and they imagine I'm here to tell everyone to that the they're all on double secret probation. Yeah, just disguised as a Satanist. Yes, they have no <laughs> idea that they do. There's just something about my aura. Again, it's the Zabrowski coming through. It's yeah. the senior, the Henry Senior face that is coming through. But when I had the hair dyed, people said hello. 
Really? People said the people like offered. They were like, "Oh, you should check out this thing," and it's like you know, it was some outfit that a hole for the dick for it. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Thank you for thinking. I, I want that." Yeah. You know, like that's so nice of you to think that I'm a full deviant because that means I'm young. Mm-hmm. I'm like euphoria me. This is me, Henry Zabrowski. Euphoria, Henry Zabrowski. Oh, my nipples are, are out. It's so cold in here. I need heroin. Yeah, I'm pe- going. I gotta go to math class. When people said your hair was dyed, they meant like it was dead. <laughs> it is still there, <laughs> but you know. notice there's more hair than there was. No, you look great. You look great. <laughs> I just, it's like literally my job to make fun of you. Is it? Is it, Rob? It looks great. I fool. No, you don't. Have, you are biased. You're forced. Yeah, no, no, it does. No, you do. I do actually course. like it against all odds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I stand here stronger than I was yesterday. Stronger than yesterday. Oh, we have one last little piece of information about the Karen Reed trial. Is there? Oh, there's more updates. There's one little thing. Is that this is really what they talked about? So we talked a little bit about the discrepancy about the broken tail light on this car because they're talking about that the reason why that they think that he was struck and killed was because they have this like broken tail light. But the problem was is that they didn't find the glass until days later, and they had to dig it out from under the snow and it was super sketch and then there was one police officer that said that they believed in previous material filmed outside of the home the karen reed home they had saw that the suv had a cracked taillight already now this is where they they did a commonwealth of massachusetts they had presented a video in court showing the seizure and control of karen reed's vehicle vehicle that could claim that to hit o'keefe and it shows trooper proctor who's the head of the entire investigation he's the one that was texting all the mean shit about karen reed to all the rest of his guys Mm -hmm. um he said he never went near the damaged taillight. Instead, they claimed he was on the other side of the car investigating the other undamaged taillight. It wasn't until a day later that the dentists find out that the fucking video was inverted. So the the president, they literally like they fucked it up. The defense detectives agree it was inverted and claim they didn't feel the need to present it as as it was the proper way. So like basically, it showed that they were he was looking at the wrong side of the car. This dude's fucked. I mean, you know, I Karen Reed, we'll see what comes out of this. But it is very, it is one of the most compelling pieces about the idea of a, like, of a trial based upon police corruption that I've seen in a while. Who knows? We'll see what comes out of it. Uh, that, so, yeah, that was my main huge fuck up. All right. For the weekend. I, I feel like I, I could have done much worse. You're allowed to correct. You know, you're allowed to be wrong. This isn't news. You're right. You know? You're right. But you people get their information from me. That's... First of all, anyone getting your information from Henry, I don't know, you might as well get your information from a dog on the side of the road. Speaking of a dog on the side of the road, <laughs> um, let's cut into this first news story. Uh, this is pretty horrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did this. Oh, yeah. So we... Um, Good segue. Yeah, isn't it nice? Um, I... Uh, do you like bang bus? Do we do trigger warnings or... Tigger warning. There's no tigers in the story. Uh, I was not a big bang bus person because I hate leaving the woman behind on the road. Was there ever a bus? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a car. Well, I think it was a van. I think the it was van. a van. Yeah, but it was the bang bus. But yeah, but yeah. I always felt sad when they you left the woman. should have been the woman. slam van. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice. That would have been better. Or how about the love bug, like Herbie, yeah, have yeah. sex in the VW bug, right? Yes, they, we know what bang bus is. Rob, he has pulled up yes, many images of bang bus. I know. I, the, the, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, but what if I told you there was a bus full of animals you could have sex with? I'd say... You're a monster. So the Adams County SPCA rescues animals being used for bestiality from a tailor towed by a bus. Now, the reason why I'm even covering this story is that it's gross, but mostly just because um, it's a tragic bus. It's a tragic bus. Now, this guy, um, he was not a, Is that the cartoon? Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> it's a tragic bus. Um, this guy, Sean Hirschbein. Love this guy. Mm-hmm. He is living a nomadic-like existence inside of this Bus. Now, it's a yellow school bus and with a makeshift trailer attached to the back of it. Now, it was found in a highway pull-off in Adams County last week. This is in Pennsylvania. God, what a great state. Yeah. Um, and if you look at... The, I, love, I love Pittsburgh. I love Philly. We know we do. Also, we're coming live to Philly, and I, but I think that show is sold out, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Well, Unless they... Yeah, they can't even get their money back, can they? No, no they're screwed. No, yeah. So we'll see in Philly. It's gonna be fun. Uh, but this guy, um, he had this bus, and was they were they were investigating this broke down bus on the side of the road. Now, mm-hmm. what this guy Sean Hirschbein did is that he had scrawled his phone number 
on the sides of this bus so he could be easily available okay. to get to. Because uh, he said he lived with animals, um, and he said that what he does is 24-hour tires and animal shows. Okay. Right, so he could do animal show with his many, many chickens. So the whole inside of the bus was filled with an entire, uh, I am going to say, chicken tenement house. It's all which, chickens. It's all chickens and roosters. It's absolutely jam-packed with chicken shit. Oh it looks God, absolutely horrifying. We're looking at pictures right now. But there was a trailer attached with that at a horse and several dogs in the back of this trailer. Now, uh, people, when you go and you look up the number, Sean Hirschbein's number, we don't have it here. I believe it's 8675 Three oh nine. Um, he scrolled his phone number. Uh, the the apparently the number went to various adult oriented websites where it showed that Sean Hirschbein is a fairly, if not popular, but self confident male sex worker. So hold on, you call the number and it goes to a website. It, well, the idea of the website was the number was connected to a bunch of websites and a bunch of escort websites for okay. this man. Sean but it was, a, but it was uh, male escorts, right? Yes. Yes, it was male escorts. Um, now, and he's the escort? He, whoop. Ooh, whoop. Now, he was working with, a working with, is a, I'm going to say that loosely. He was one of his co-writers with someone named Deanna Huff. Now, it seems like he was slowly but surely grooming this 15-year-old girl. That's kind of where all these things kind of came from. And he sent to her a bunch of pictures, which is, again, if you... I don't recommend flirting with a 15-year-old girl if you're not 15 years old as well. But I would say that if you're not, don't send a bunch of pictures of a guy sucking horse dick. No. Because it's like, I would say, BTS tickets. I would say something like, you know, you go see... Go, don't talk to men on the internet. Go home, I, I think, is a good thing to write to them. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Not, hey, you want to go see If with yeah. everyone's favorite Ryan Reynolds with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Again, great, but again, but if you were to ask a child on a date, you'd take him to see If with Ryan Reynolds, and he's even said that. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds loves that. Yeah, and so he's but, like, bring the children to my movie. So you got to, yeah, yeah being and like, make sure they're not your children. Find I'm Ryan a kid Reynolds. to bring. Yeah, 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 I saw that. It was weird. It he kind of really put weird. it in the middle of a Mint Mobile ad where he said something about. He's like, find a kid, bring it to if. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, we have to do a Mint Mobile ad in a little bit. We love them. We love Ryan. We, we love, love him. <laughs> we love Ryan Reynolds. I love the movie <laughs> if. I'm just saying it was a suggestion that he made, and I don't think that's a. It's got nothing to do with Mint Mobile. He's just owner of it and and the main advertiser for it. Now, <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta get back into this. So the see, it was bad, right? So yeah, uh, yeah no. But so what were the dogs and the horses doing in that trailer behind the school bus? I believe they were putting makeup on and getting dressed. Now, a passing motorist <laughs> noticed Hirschbein, 50, and his traveling companion, Huff, they were broken down in Oxford Township. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all according to PenLive.com. Uh, they found the uh, they found the the bus. Oh, oh so there's they, the phone number. I yes, can't read it. There's the phone number. Yes, it's seven one six. So <laughs> we go look it up. Eight. Oh, great. Seven one six found one. No, we will probably have to bleep that out. But Why? it's in the seven one six area code. If you're curious, yeah. You can go check that out, right? <laughs> so the cops went in there, and it was really bad, right? They went inside the bus. They went inside the trailer. They saw the fact that it had four dogs, a horse, and a bull, right? Mm -hmm. the bedding everywhere, and it was really bad. They then went and realized that he was using this app called Text Now, speaking to this juvenile. All this shit was going. It's just really the long and short of this story is this man had a mobile, and you said a bad term, but I'm going to say out of respect for the animals, a brothel, that he was driving back and forth. What did I say? A whorehouse. I don't think I said it. Sounds like you said it. No, I, I just, and I said that was disrespectful. That was disrespectful. I said right? boarhouse. Yeah, boarhouse is cute. Yeah. Did you say? No. <laughs> no, they went. It, it's, just, it's just not good. I it's do really want to talk about it. They went and they brought the animals in. They checked them for signs of abuse. They all had it. None of it was good. It's just the, it turns out the way they were getting all of the animals too is that they just went on the far Facebook marketplace and anybody had an animal to get rid of, they would just pick up. And so they've been using this as a sort of loose animal modeling agency yeah. for a, a period of time. And it looks like business is about to be closed. Now, it's crazy because who did, who were his customers? People in the seven one six area. 
That's, but that's not. Uh, first of all, he was arrested in West Virginia. He was, and he was doing it in, fi- in, uh, oh, in this Pennsylvania. Is a, this is a part of the reason why this is actually a very complicated. Seven one six is Buffalo. That that was where he was originally located yeah. because he did move and his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> They're endangered, <laughs> and that's unfortunate. All right, uh, but the uh, the story, it's. It's very complicated. That's why I'd say, yeah. like, go read it on your own. You'd love this. He moved back and forth across the country often. This mm-hmm. man has been doing crimes, sex-based crimes, for a very long time. And he's been arrested several times. He's done this back and forth. And one of the things that is extremely it's extremely difficult to figure out how to catch somebody who's done a bunch of different crimes in, like, four different states over a very short period of time. And he's traveling anonymously in a giant bus. That is yeah. barely that he it is now it's registered to him in Georgia. But he had sold it, he bought it back. Like it's like all this kind of shit. So it's like that's the one thing I don't want. It's like you bought the bus after it was used as the quote unquote bestiality bus, and then what? You took a bunch of blind kids to the park? I mean, it was, it's definitely you get a discount. I don't know if they did. Yeah, you gotta re- remodel it. Cause you have all these blind kids just being like, What's that smell? Nothing. <laughs> What's that sound? No, that's a my animal sound pack. He's a regular Heel Cassidy. Neil Cassidy. Neil Cassidy of the bus, bus further, the further electric bus. Yes. Kool-Aid acid. And test. heel as a dog's yes, heel. Yes, heels are wow, Eddie. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad we did this story. Get on the bus. Yeah, they gave the dogs. The tragic bus. Yeah, they gave the dogs rape kits. And they found out that their vulvas were. That's enlarged. what I was gonna skip. I feel like that's the kind of information that people uh, expect to hear on side stories. Well, I'll tell you what. If they wrote it in the paper. I know. If Penn Live, the Patriot News, decided that they wanted they needed to, to do this. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I um, Who am I? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you what. My vulvas are just swollen thinking about it. Oh, yeah. So it's really bad. They call and it I- the worst thing to ever happen in Gettysburg. <laughs> all the ghosts of the Civil War men just like sitting there all the years like do you da, 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 da. And, just, and they're just sitting there like smoking as like ghosts watching a guy fuck a horse in a field just being like so this is what this for us defending this grand union this is what the future held you know that 3,000 to 5,000 horses were killed in Gettysburg, and this is still the worst thing? To be honest, I bet those horses would rather have just been shot in the head. <laughs> I mean, like, hey, you know what? Honestly, why don't you just end it? All right? I'll die the old-fashioned <laughs> way. Not the the old way. Oh, God. Well, I'm, I wanted to cover that story. But that we got was it out, all you. That was all, but we got it out. Honestly, it was really just about the bus mm-hmm. and having it be a, a whole industry Yeah, that this guy has been running for a long time. And, uh, and it's... Uh, it's irresponsible. Yeah. Right. So let's get into cult alert. Heel Cassidy. Heel Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. Let's write it down. <laughs> now, I don't normally like to cover. I don't normally like to cover boutique cults, especially ones that are on the internet, because largely it. it you giving them advertising. It gives them advertising, but this one's really funny. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to. Now, this is one. It's got one of my fa- favorite names. Of a cult that I've heard a long time. Profundity yours. Now it is I they could still end up, who knows? Like, I guess legally I have to say it's I don't know if you'd call it a cult or not, but it sure does fucking seem like it. Now, this group is running out of a small town in Texas called Marietta. Marietta is about 130 people. But this group, Profundity Yours, started by the effervescent. Linda Good McGillis, uh, which started around 2014, has essentially taken over this entire small town. They bought the only restaurant in town. Oh. Right? So they're now they're using it for meetings. They bought a ranch called the Emerald Sun City of Lights Ranch, where they are now, a pe- bunch of people are living o- on this land, and they are not allowed to talk to their families because, again, the, if they talk to the families, they don't get the light energy inside of them mm. that they need to get. Now, this woman, now, Linda Good McMill- McGillis, she says she's the second coming of Jesus Christ. But Even when I look, she at looks her, like the second coming of Roddy Roddy Piper. And she does. She has got. She's more 
Rodney Dangerfield than Christ. <laughs> um, she believes that she is the great I am, that she is connected to this energy, the I am, which is the I am stands for the Intergalactic Alliance of Masters, which is the Ascended Masters, a group of super powerful people up in the sky. Hmm? Dude, I want one of my buddies... Um, from high school, he disappeared for a while, started worshiping this mountain. This and Mount he, Shasta. And then he came back and his, he was hanging out with this dude named I Am. Now, I Am is a common thread in a lot of cult talk. I Am has been around since like the 1950s. There was a channeler, I forget her name, that worked on the I Am energy. This has been around for a long You're time. You're blowing my mind right now. Yes, and it's but it's a common phrase and a trope within cults and cult leaders to use because it sounds like a thing. Yeah. It sounds like a thing that would be real. But I, we will. Marcus has said that I wasn't allowed to, but I finally allowed. I'm going to be doing my channeler's episode series oh. at some point. I don't care if you all fall asleep because I'm fascinated with Chandler's. I think they're great. Um, now he died, by the way. Who? Chandler. Oh, Bing? Yeah. Man, there's like five people going down for that, too. Oh, yeah. Everyone's going. I mean, every time a celeb like that dies, like they got the, the guy who Got him the fentanyl. Hoffman, the, the guy who killed Philip Seymour Hoffman, he got he's in prison. Oh forever. yeah, they're coming for the him. The guy who get Michael K. Williams, he's in he's in prison forever. Yes. Yeah, they're coming for him. When you kill a good celebrity, you go down. They want you. Yeah, they'll want to come get you, and they're not because they, they don't want that ketamine, dude. Um, but so McGillis, she believes that she is tra- channeling these alien energies. She's the alpha. She's the omega. She doesn't like the word alien. She no. She says it's racist. Yeah, yeah. She says that it's ra- yeah. They, they have to say extraterrestrial. The mm-hmm. aliens racist. Someone's bad at calling them a bing bong, which we said it's the b word oh. for aliens. You can't do that with them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Never with the hard G. Now McGillis, uh, she said they bought the the thing about her is that she's completely uh, batshit nuts, and the really what's bad is that she's preying upon people that are looking to fix their trauma. So she started as like a group, like it started as this sort of like loose hangout group, and then slowly has become profundity yours of the last several years. Mm-hmm. Um, her husband was arrested for uh, her heart, Mark Allen McNeely. He reportedly he was her, her common law husband. They were together. He's currently serving twelve years on a child pornography conviction in Montana. So the, everything is coming up, McGillis. It's like a great. It's a great family. You want to be involved. Oh, and when he gets out, he's going to join them. Oh, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Now, she uh, she now knows that people are paying attention to it, and she's, like, getting really angry about it. But the thing about L- Linda McGillis is she, the way she works, I was talking about with the, with the crew right before we started recording, about how, like, if you're in a cult that has a physical location, I totally fucking get it. Like, that makes sense. I think getting into a cult... On a oh, fuck it, like going to a the Baja or going to go to some going to Guiana, right? Like yeah. that kind of makes sense to me in a way. A where beach or a volcano, something, or a right? mountain, but, or a forest. But if you get got over Zoom, I don't understand. If we're doing cults remote here, I, mean, I got to say, worse, Zoom we, or Texas? I don't know, dude. I think no. This all of this is over Zoom. It's all over Zoom and Facebook. And but they now have a ranch. They are making it physical. But just this idea of being like, we're really gonna be like, oh, we're gonna have a cult remote workers. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I think that they have to return to the office. That's hard to <laughs> and I'm sorry if that makes me a boomer about cults. All right, if you want to be in a cult, you go to a commune and you suck a weird man's with permanent sunglasses dick just like everybody else. Okay. Well, what does she say to these people? So with their, she does these communiques where she talks about, and, and like, I tried to pin it down, and a lot of it it's about how like light is energy, and you need to let it inside of you to transform, and you have to give me money for in order for me to teach you these things to in order to quote unquote change your inverted solar coding. That's like one big term she uses. Another term is again the the intergalactic alliance of masters, like the concept of the that there's ascended masters, ascended masters in the world of channeling is like this is also kind of come from Madame Blavatsky. This concept that there is, I know this information. Like if this is the term when you see ascended masters, it's a cult leader saying, "Yeah, I know this information, but it's not that I'm special. Is that I've been granted access." to a group of special secret intelligences, often referred to as Ascended Masters. That'd be like a term. So they they are, when someone says Ascended Masters, that means a group of people that's telling you what to do, do a bunch of bad shit to a bunch of people, it's, it's a group of people who doesn't exist. Okay. Because they're, they're over there. 
Right. It's, it's just blaming your cult on being like, I wish that I could change the group's bankings. I, I wish that I could, but according to the Ascended Masters, this is the only way we can go towards the light. That style of yeah. shit. So she's doing that. But also one of my favorite is that she says that we will get out of the belief of God. Right, because God is not the belief. It's I am is the belief, but God, because God stands for generator, operator, destroyer. God is just I am's fucking like consigliere. Wow, generator, operator, destroyer. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, that's fucking awesome. That is kind of cool. Yeah, well, that's metal as fuck. I was yeah. like, I want that shirt, dude. That's, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Um, but yes, yeah, she mostly rambles. But the reason why we also covered is that she is she is isolating people. So it's starting to get to the point they're starting to round up. Yeah, they're doing that thing. They're doing round up. And there was a there's a guy named Siren Warner. I don't know how you when it comes to TikTok, like investigators, I never I'm never that into it, but this guy actually has some great cuts on this cult and I, this guy I, I can't speak for the rest of his material but this is a great video okay great and so what he did was he cut, clipped out clipped out about how they what they do is ramble about fucking nonsense I mean they're not even rambling it's not even so if you could find it we have some cuts from his he cut together of her talking in tongues I've been keeping tabs on a new age religious group in Texas called Profundity Yours and I believe there's reason to be concerned. It's not that I think all the middle-aged members in matching uniforms are dangerous. They seem pretty tame. I'm not too concerned about the nonsense language they speak. Yeah, so they just start talking. Some, she's got good, like, yeah. I also don't understand why every new cult woman leader they all sound like aunt patty from the simpsons oh yeah because yeah. she is like it's like i need you to understand what uh, the, the type of energies here uh, we need to find a balance man in your energies yeah i really for something about that though like you know i do respect women who talk like that i feel like it's a it's a they, new pack it feels like love. you know something yeah, yeah 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 you sound like a fun waitress i remember one time i was Delivering baby furniture for a while, baby, baby furniture rentals back in Florida. Things that people asked for. Yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah, just yeah. arrive with a bunch of weird baby furniture and threw it on a lawn, going like, "Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be back it. here in a week, you cunt." <laughs> no, it's baby furniture rentals. Is like an actual like job, a business in South Florida because mm -hmm. old people live there and they have people visit them and they need to rent a crib. Yeah, you know. So, but I remember I'd spend these long ass days going around, people yelling at me, call me fat, call me hammered all day long, trying to get me <laughs> fired. I hated it. Mm -hmm. And then I had a really long day one time and I remember the last one was in the shitty neighborhood and it was just awful and I couldn't I was like damn it this is disgusting and then I put a crib in this woman's house and she was the nicest one of everyone she's smoking a million cigarettes around all these kids and then she hands me ten dollars at the end of the day and say go buy yourself a pack of cigarettes she's like no ma'am I'm sorry you scared me straight but she gave me the biggest tip I got the entire time I worked there no because they nothing I, I don't know what it is because they love you should see the mansions I put fucking cribs in. I know. They love. They love. A lady that sounds like that. That sounds like somebody you can trust for some reason. Yeah. It sounds like somebody who's lived a lot of life. Oh, too much life. Too much life. Mm -hmm. But McGillis has lived too much life. From and that, so which right now. Good. And that is what you know as the Elohim or in the younger myth of creational this is my. This is what I'm talking about. I listened to this for three hours, <laughs> and this lady talks a non-stop clip about the idea that we are in. We need to separate our two realities. That we are in one reality where we're here and now, but there's another reality where we're up and down. And, uh, and like she's saying all this, like it's it is. It is the most horse shit I've heard. She sounds like a computer with lips. I've read Dianetics, mm -hmm. and it's made more sense. Like it's that like. LRH was uh, the more and more I, I see other you cult leaders. Him. More and more I you see love these other guys. LRH. They He's just don't favorite. fucking get it. They don't get it. LRH is the only one who did it right. He <laughs> did it right. Him, Joseph Smith. Yeah. They did it right. They knew what they were doing. They had a plan. It was crazy. I mean, Joseph Smith didn't really have a plan. He was just sick of walking and he saw a lake and he was like, Jesus was here. J Joseph Smith was a very very skilled con man. I would put him up. I still view probably it's like he's in the con man hall of fame. 
You it's like so? it's oh yeah. yeah 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 yeah. He's on the Mount Rushmore. He's met the what he, he did was uh, truly like because Mormonism is still one of the third. It's I think it's the third biggest religion in the world. Mormonism? Yeah, it's huge. Mormonism is huge. Is that why all those books are in the hotels? That's because of a deal with Hyatt. Really? Well, that's something else. Well, what was it? The the Mormon? I forget why. It was something. There's something with the Book of Mormon. I don't remember. I'm not gonna act. I'm not gonna say confidently why I know. Okay. Because I don't know. Fair enough. But they did something. You learned off of your Karen Reed mistakes. I try to. I try not to talk. If I'm talking out of my ass, um, it's because I'm trying to. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I'm not, I'm trying not to. Speak with confidence. Yeah, it's every day. How do you think I got here, folks? <laughs> How do you think I did this? Um, so, all right. so what's well, going to happen to this woman? Nothing. She, nothing? Right now, we'll see. Right now, it's just the beginning. Something will obviously, some sort of bullshit's going to end up coming out. There, people are con- just mostly getting concerned about the fact they are is, currently isolating themselves. Is profundity yours like a religion? Profundity yours! Profundity yours! No, it is. Profundity yours <laughs> is a society of diverse humans coming together now to go create a new environment. One of the empowered gratitude and heart based living as one with the earth. Each one of us contributes wisdom, experience, and limitless perspectives on a new way of being, living, and participating in life. <laughs> we choose to live by higher morals, ethics, honesty, and integrity. We encourage art based. It's art based living. That's the thing, it's heart based. All right. Through building strong foundations of trust, genuineness, and authenticity. (laughs) Our community grows and we expand through offerings and love blessings of others as we walk hand in hand with each other in humbled gratitude, grace, truth, faith, and love. (laughs) So that's who they are. Cool. All right, so yeah, their 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 mission is to live as one with the earth, whole heart, whole mind, whole soul, whole spirit. Promote, apply, embody spirit, aka Peabody means nothing. Purpose: We bring the wisdom of the ways of the ancients to the present reality, whilst letting go of the modernization enslavement by living our ancient futuristic knowing. Yeah, I wish if I could just live my ancient futuristic knowing, I wouldn't need to have a job. That's what she's saying. That is actually, that's not, sounds nice. I just don't know how, I guess we have to. Yeah, the first thing you want to do is going to go down. You're going to get me a pack of Paul Malls. And then you're going to call my ex-husband and you're going to tell him, go fuck yourself. Right? Well, he's coming. He loves it. No, well, no, we were, that's my ex-husband. This is my current husband. Oh. I love what he does. I don't care about the child pornography because children grow. <laughs> and then every child becomes a lady. <laughs> and then is <laughs> then, 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 then game on. <laughs> then we can all take a piece. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a message. I love crazy people. You know who also crazy is Danica what? Patrick. I love Danica I, Patrick. I did not know. So Danica, Danica Patrick, who is a Formula One driver, right? Oh, Wasn't you. that that was what she was? NAS- she was like beautiful. Yeah, she did both. Isn't her thing? She did NASCAR? Yeah, she did both of them. No, isn't Danica Patrick? She also, like, but wasn't she, like, famous for a while? Like She, she was, was like, the first woman famous. to do it. Yeah, and now, but now she's apparently. She com- was awesome. She's completely insane now. <sighs> now, apparently, she went, she got, she did her Lizard People podcast, apparently. I didn't and, know about any of this. Yeah, this is so sad. She did a long thing about how she believes there's another, another again. It's these terms that come up. So think about this. They treated her like shit. Think about all the stuff that I just said, right? Yeah. About, like I said, New Earth, blah, blah, blah. Here's, here's what Danica Patrick is saying. People in the past, quote unquote, found the solution for cancer, but they were killed off. We we're seeing the uprising, like, quote, New Earth frequency. People getting murdered over free energy technology. 5G is poisoning us. Mm -hmm. They're also saying here, you obviously all the UFO is fine. All the UFO stuff is real. That's kind of the new. That's unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say that that makes sense. Um, in the next four years, the celebrity reptilians will all shape shift into their true forms because of these co- so called truth love vibrations. Those who do not Damn. wish to show their true forms will quote unquote transmute into the light, aka pass away. So they're going to die, right? So, according to her, Justin Bieber is going to accidentally shape shift on stage in front of thousands. He c- canceled his tour, he's not doing it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you know who's going to do it? It's fucking the one that we're not talking about is fucking Taylor Swift. Who's going to flip it on all of us? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be afraid of her. We're going to be afraid of her in 2028. You know who she used to date? Who? Aaron Rodgers. She dated Aaron Rodgers? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. No, they're all crazy, dude. And they're all connected. It's so Taylor weird. Taylor Swift is next, dude. No, she's not. She's going to flip her people. She's going to flip them. She's into doing something. great. She's fine. She's going to flip she's them. She's way more than fine. I'm just saying, yeah, she's doing fine. Yeah. I'm just saying, we got to watch her. Because if she flips Everyone's these Everyone's watching her. Because we don't, I'm going to say, but we got to, like, with one foot into the mania, one foot out. I don't mind the music. I don't even care about the music. I don't like the music, but I respect her as a person. She has too much strength, and we got to be careful. I think she's good. For now. A good human is a better way to say I actually it. don't. How do you know that? Because she gave a bunch of money to everyone who works for her. Yeah, but that's just so they don't snitch. Snitch. $100 million to everybody. So she doesn't snitch, dude. Crew. That's fucking body money, dog. That's well, hide money, but I don't know what they got going on backstage, dog. Man, who cares if she's giving out a hundred mil? I don't know, man. Everybody's got a price, don't they? Yeah. Wow. For you give me more, you could treat me worse. My price is exactly seven thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So Danica did do a bunch of mushrooms. Yeah. Um. We have an energetic responsibility to clear all of these energies, and uh, basically, we have to stop telling kids that Santa's real and say that ghosts are real. I agree with. I agree yeah. with that. To be honest with you, I don't like the Santa Claus thing. I told you my f- perspective is go deeper in. But why are we just lying to children? Because they should just get used to it now. Mommy bought the gifts. Daddy worked hard. I fucking bought them. Not Santa Claus. I'm not having There's kids. There's no fucking elephants. You're not having a child. I'm elephants, not having a elves. child. Yeah, she's trying to have elves. We're not having kids. This is why we're not having kids. You know also why we're not having kids is that I was also saw three, I mean this, mm-hmm. three different stories in the last month of a kid killing their parents. There was one who was a Mormon kid that was that transitioned to a, a girl and then flipped out and killed the parents in cold blood, double tapped both mm-hmm. of them and then almost shot, killed her brother. And then there was another one. It was a young girl who was 15 years old, stabbed her mom, mother in her sleep because he said her mother was trying to deny her blackness. Oh my God. Um, to white. She was white also, by the way. And then, um, and then another kid shot his mom and his dad. And I was like, Ooh, I'm, I am I got to get this vasectomy. Yeah. <laughs> I have got to get this shit because it is, yeah, because the, oh. All right. A toddler has now shot someone every week for two solid years in America. We got to be careful, man. Yeah. We got to fucking, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, dude. We got to be careful. We got to be, these kids, for man. two years, every week. A toddler has shot somebody in America. Shit's too hard here. Toddler's what? Four and under? Yeah. That's wild. Shit's too hard here, man. It shouldn't be like that. We should say, oh, toddlers are at the height of playing with blocks this year. Like, like that shouldn't be. should be, oh, toddlers have loved the letter G the most this year. I'd say at the very least, we should make it harder to pull a trigger. I think you should have more hand strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be. I don't think a toddler should be physically able to pull the trigger of a gun. That's a little too easy. Unless, you know, hear me out, Eddie. Mm-hmm. Every toddler gets a gun. Oh, okay, that makes sense. The only thing to stop a toddler with a gun is a, a good toddler, toddler with, with a, a gun. gun. That's a great idea, Henry. <laughs> That's a good idea. I appreciate that. All right, one in five toddlers gets a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, one of five toddlers gets a grenade. Let's see how it happens. Let's see how it works. One of five toddlers is a grenade. <gasps> Fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> it's like crank. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. Oh, um, man. yeah. What a horrible week. So yeah, go go go. <laughs> we gotta be careful. So we were, there was a, a couple weeks ago. We were gonna talk about uh, something that we decided to skip. Whereas a woman in California was mauled. And killed by a black bear. 71-year-old Patrice Miller, um, She's a black bear was harassing her for months and ended up breaking into her home and killing her. What the living fuck, Yes. Dude? What did she do? She did was, she pirate like Winnie the Pooh? No, she was just bad at taking out a trash, unfortunately. It That's seems a, like. I don't, that shouldn't be punishable by death. No, well, in bear culture it is. Um, <laughs> she used to call the, the bear the big bastard. And she always say the big bastards coming to my house and stuff. And everyone and everyone would talk. She'd always tell people about the bear that was coming to her house all the time. The bear attacked her in her living room. Okay, so now when I'm looking at this, is that so? She knew that this bear was coming around. 
Yeah, it was just no. hanging around her house for months. Now they, she knew it enough, and she knew that it was coming after the stuff, the, her garbage. Right. Mm -hmm. It appeared that the bear had been pro uh, probably been there for several days and been feeding on her remains now, after it killed her. This is crazy. She installed steel, ball steel bars across her windows to try to keep the bear out mm -hmm. before it broke her fucking door down. Yeah. He said that the bear broke an ex. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. He didn't kill her. The bear didn't kill her. No, they're saying they're one theory. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. No, the bear killed her. The bear, it's a black bear, too. Black bears usually don't kill people. So this is like a big fucking weird thing. What the living fuck? This bear had a mission to kill this woman. Whoa. It had a vendetta against her. Well, it's like, it's like it hurt I bet him. she would come out and scream at it and throw like, cans ah, at it and get shit. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. You dumb bear. Get out of here. For months. Wow. And then one day that bear is like. Snapped. It's time to regulate. That's like the first thing you thought. It's just like, it's yeah. Tom. yeah, baby. Guess big bastard is here. <laughs> now this is the big bastard's house. <laughs> and then it just fucking like, and then it ripped her to shreds. Holy shit! Yeah, pulled her yeah. from her bed into the living room. Oh, that's what it is. They first thought that maybe it was attracted that she had died in the house and she was like a drac attracted to the smell. Yeah. That's what they thought, but no. No, the bear broke in her house and fucking killed her in her bed and then ate her in the living room and fit and fed on her for a while. Hey, at least it was just sitting in her living room eating her and shitting all over the place. She didn't go to waste. No. No, she didn't. But that's like that's so then they put the bear down? Of course they put the bear down. Was it sitting on the couch watching TV? It's a man eater. But at that point, is it just living in the house? Well Is it taking showers and it's eating out of the fridge? If you Break into someone's house and you eat them. You don't get the deed. I feel like you should. <laughs> I feel like if you cannibalize the people, that's your house. You've consumed a thing. Isn't it true that if you get the deed in your hand, it's your deed? No. That if you get it the has deed, to be signed over to you. Why is it there every movie? Isn't there movie in in television? Tomb and, are you and talking cartoons? about Tombstone? <laughs> I'm just saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it a deed? That's what I thought. I thought you could take a deed. Times are like, different. It's mine now. Nah, like if you crack open a safe, it's like now nah, your house is mine, old lady. Right. <laughs> You're talking about a time that was like 10 years ago there were slaves. <laughs> That's when that was going down. A lot of stuff's changed. But yeah, apparently in town they never saw bears uh, back in the day, but now they're everywhere. Well, this is the truth. This is across California. Bears are like, because what's they're happening a is comeback. They, are, they are making a comeback, which is good in one way, but they're, it's bad in another way. It's because of we're destroying their environment and they're moving more towards the cities. They're running out of their actual food in the forests and they're moving towards the cities looking for food. And that's kind of like what we're seeing. We're seeing in, uh, in our neighborhood that we're getting a massive influx of coyotes. Coyotes oh, yeah. are fucking everywhere. Mm -hmm. Is because they're leaving. They're leaving the hills and they're coming down into the valley. Yeah, that happened like a lot out. during COVID, but yes. now it's happening again, which is weird. It's because they're running out of natural food, or there's something else. Something is happening that's bringing them out. But they're, it's like, and they're fine. I guess with a coyote, you can just kick it in the head and it'll run away. Yeah, no, you you can beat a coyote off. Nice, but it's like five coyotes you can't beat off. No, because if I'm do, if I got five coyotes, I need I'm a baseball bat. I'm beating off coyotes all the time. How about it's different? That's different. <laughs> you they are wily. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to ingratiate yourself to them, yeah, and man. that's the difference. You're Call to... me the load runner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I like that guy's house. <laughs> <laughs> I draw a giant vagina on the side of a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. That's called vor. Yeah. Being sliding into that. All right, let's hey, see. It's the Acme flashlight. That's uh, uh. <laughs> Well, listen, before I just want to talk about this for two seconds because I know something's gonna happen before the end of the week. Yes. And I just want to bring it up. We're studying this. We're gonna find out what's going on. But there are two astronauts stuck in space because Boeing fucked up again. Dude. Boeing also sort of semi admitted that they do, they have. There was like a representative of the company that said he believed there had been like, re, what's the term, like revenge like behavior from Boeing towards some of the whistleblowers. It sounds like yeah. it's not just straight up whacking them necessarily, but it's ruining their lives, which is leading them to commit suicide or die of weird diseases. But it's also like, I'm starting to, I, I don't think Boeing. They're not killing them, but they're giving them diseases. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that Boeing is not doing well. Yeah. And I think that they're, they're just so important, you know, and they just do so many things. And then the astronauts being left up there. I know the astronauts technically sign on to die. Yeah, I guess so. But, but it's, it's been a long they time. They sign on to die. No. They sign on and saying, if I die. Yeah, I'm then I'm fine with it because I'm an astronaut. But there but was yeah, a leak before they left. They, well, do they go... This is actually side stories LPOTL at gmail.com because I'd love to talk to somebody who knows more about that. About, yeah. Because I feel like what well, it is... Well, this is a very much a developing story. Very much so. And I would love to know if there is... As I imagine there is, a series of protocols that you have to fulfill before you could take off. And then I also wonder if the pilots themselves are like, oh, that's an issue we can handle later, or are they just not told? Like, are they not, is that a thing where they're looking at it and they decide to go ahead because, oh, hey, actually, maybe we, this is like a thing that we can fix up there. Yeah. Because, but I don't know if that's how that works. I imagine if anything's broken on a fucking space shuttle, they would stop it. But maybe they can't. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe it literally gets to a point where once the train's rolling out the fucking the station that you can't stop it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what are they supposed to do? They're fucking up there. I mean, they're I mean, they're, they're scheduled fucked. to come home on July 2nd. So we'll see if that happens. So why are they going to die? Is it just because they just have no more resources and they're just stuck? The he- There's a helium leak. So they're losing like... So they can't talk in funny voices to each other, and they can, they're going to lose morale? Or Yeah, I think that's what it is, and they're both going to commit suicide. No, I don't know who exactly. I don't know how the fucking spaceships work, all right? I'm not, and either just Boeing, apparently. <laughs> they got to stop asking us to come in and consult. They said maybe we shouldn't break our NDA right now, but actually, they, it's been... It's been eight months. Uh, yeah, no, we've been consulting on a lot of the new Boeing craft, yeah. and they have asked us for a lot of our opinions. And because our main I thing, I came is, in, I was like, "Yo, why isn't this shit leaking helium?" And yeah, they're like, they're, I'm sorry, Ed. We'll make it leak helium. Poke, 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 poke. You brought a pencil. <laughs> He's just like, stuck a bunch of holes in the helium balloons. I don't fucking know, dude. I told him, "Hey, why don't you make s- space shuttles not stupid anymore?" Yeah, man, don't make them fucking dumb. Fucking wherever, dude. <laughs> Put a fucking. I want a flaming skull on one, man. Goddamn space. Idiots. <laughs> you don't know how to fucking run a business Boeing. Fuck you, dude. Well, I hope um, these astronauts live. I like astronauts. Uh, we all like astronauts. You know, remember the insult, your mother's an astronaut? Yeah, what was that? I don't know. That never made sense to me. Why was that? It's like a compliment. That's a weird one. Right? Your, your mama's an astronaut. Yeah, why was that a thing? Maybe it was because it was close to the when uh, the Challenger. So your Chris mother died in a fucking explosion? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your mother's Chris an Mc- astronaut right here. Okay, this just says, all right. Yeah. Astronaut, his mom was a spaced out junkie, oh. a druggie, therefore being all messed up. Yeah, is that what they really say? They don't just say your mom's a fucked up junkie? Yeah. They don't just see that because I feel like that's way Astronaut's to the point. Astronaut's a really nice way of saying your mom's a junkie. It was made famous by white men can't jump. Yeah, I remember that. That's right. Oh, yeah. Your mom was an astronaut. Hey, leave my mama out of this. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like, oh, me saying your mother's an astronaut is just another way of saying you're all fucked up. Mm-hmm. Well, and we learned that. You ever remember? Did you ever hear that Big Bird was supposed to be on the Challenger? We talked all about this. Oh yeah, we did. We talked. We did a whole breakdown. I did it with Marcus. Oh okay, I, was I did say, a whole breakdown with Marcus about how we. I believe, do forget everything the moment I walk out of this yes, room. Marcus and I talked about how <laughs> he believes that. But literally, American history would have been different if Big Bird was killed on the Challenger. Oh, like, if yeah. he had exploded the Challenger, a lot of shit. And then we brought up all the various ways that everything else could be different. You know, I saw the Challenger explode. Yeah? Yeah, when I was a kid, I was in preschool, and they all brought, I was around Orlando, and they brought us outside to see the space shuttle launch. And we and saw you it did, explode. You did nothing to stop it. I did nothing to stop it. I probably it was, took a nap. I guess it's another NDA broken. NDA. No dogs allowed. No dogs allowed. <laughs> Not on the tragic bus. The tragic bus. All right, uh, let's do some listener emails. <clears throat> now, Eddie brought up a really gross thing last week, but and not a gross thing, but it was like a uh, uh, inside view to Eddie's mind that I didn't understand. And what apparently, did I say? you tripped into a whole world. Now, you said your favorite thing in the world is the thigh meat that is above the end of a thigh high sock. Leading yeah. up to the top of the hem of a short skirt, that you said that that was your favorite. Not thing. my favorite thing, but I really like it. But you, it is your. It, you like it a lot. I like it a lot. You like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, and guess well, who else really likes it? L- lots of people. The entire island of Japan. Ooh, now, apparently, I like Japan. According to a listener, 
The thigh high socks to skirt hem strip of thigh meat actually has a name in Japanese because it's so fetishized. Zetiai Ryoki. No, I don't know how to correctly pronounce it, but I do <laughs> know how to wear it. And I know that it gets me laid by my filthy weeb of a partner. That's oh, according yeah. to listener number two. I don't think that's that difficult, sorry. Um, but listener number two, all right, listening to the new episode right now, and I'm so glad to finally have something to email you on. When Andy was talking about the area of exposed thigh, when someone wears knee-high high socks, it's also called absolute territory. Okay. It was a big time. It was a big term. I saw in my early days in 4chan's anime board, which I think really derived from Neon Genesis, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I can totally see that, right? The, the higher the stocking and shorter the skirt, the more powerful the absolute territory becomes. I can see that. There's nothing cuter or Sexier than a glimpse of skin. Happy to continue to see Eddie be a man of taste. Look at this. Yep. <laughs> People are with me. I think that's great. It's fine. And you don't like it. You know what it is? I'm not into the schoolgirl aesthetic. It doesn't have to be a schoolgirl skirt. It's very much so in the realm of the schoolgirl territory because of the socks and skirt. What are you trying to say to me? I'm just saying it's not wrong because a schoolgirl can be 30. Anyone can wear it. School, school, girls go to school at every age. Women go to school, mm -hmm. right? You don't got to be. You could be 40 and be a schoolgirl. If you're dressed like one, if you go to school, you school learn to read. Woman. School woman. <laughs> <laughs> every woman loves I'm to hear that. I'm here for my GED. Yeah, all right, you school woman. Don't you look at my thigh meat. Hey, hey, you should live it out. <laughs> you should have left it out. Yeah, there's the absolute territory. Yeah, it is. It is mostly yes. I believe this. It, it is coming from. It is a. It's a Catholic schoolgirl uniform aesthetic that I think comes I from your high Catholic school. school. I think it literally comes from your high school. Wow, that's this crazy. is from the back in the day. Not high school, grade school. Yeah, this is a an old idea in Ed's mind. Wow. Yeah, we learned something. I learned something about yourself. Yeah, because I like legs and I like meat. I love legs. I like meat, but yeah. I like all of it. I like all of it too. But I, if I were to order it. Not on a menu, like number one, number two. Legs be in the top five parts on a woman. <laughs> this is also how they did it on the tragic bus. Because <laughs> you know what they say about dogs? Four legs, no waiting. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, here we go. This is a concerning email. Oh, right. Which, what is it? <laughs> I, they're all concerning, by the way. This one is very concerning. Okay. Um. All right. Of course, I'm writing to you now because of the latest episodes. Now, how is it that I have a child that is a cannibal? It's not really that black and white. They're not a practicing cannibal. They've never actually consumed human flesh. However, they have had cannibalistic urges since they were a toddler. When they were two, they would say things like, I would like to eat somebody. I'm going to eat you. I will gobble you up. But when you hear things like that come out of a two-year-old's mouth, you don't really take it seriously. No. As they got older, they confided in me that they were hearing voices. And the voices were telling them to do horrific things, and they felt the urge to consume human flesh. Okay. Of course, we put them in counseling immediately. After a while, they were finally diagnosed with psychosis. They've been on antipsychotics and are still continuing counseling. They know they shouldn't consume human flesh, but they don't, but they don't understand why. I've explained why in society you wouldn't do that and the health reasons behind it. It's going to be a long road, obviously, but we will get there, all body parts intact, uneaten. I do not fear my child. I love them with all my heart. I do not think that I will ever be consumed. We have a healthy relationship, and they are very open with me. Although we do take it seriously, we do joke around about it as well. Mental illness doesn't have to be scary all the time. It's like a battle of nature versus nurture, and with my, and with my child, with any luck, having a good environment and loving parents wins out. So hopefully this is one cannibal you guys will never hear about in the news. And I actually think that that is one of the weirdest, brightest lights I've heard in a second. Because what we've talked about endlessly over the years is people like Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gein, Armin Mivas. Imagine if there was a place that they could say in a safe way, I'm having these horrendous thoughts. Yeah. And I need help. So I think that's largely towards the youngness of this kid that they were able to be so open with their parents and the fact that it was happening this early. We now know Armin Mivis had the same cannibalistic fantasies as a little boy. Mm -hmm. We know that BTK was also having SM fantasies as a little boy. Just came out of the fucking the pipe like that. Just yeah. that's how they were. So that I, I like it's funny and it's it's scary, but there's also like a thing in there like that's what real love is. 
is someone saying to you something like this and, and want, before they commit a crime or do something really fucked up, you're, you don't, no judgments. You say, I'm here to help. I'm going to do it first. I'm because you need help. And you're not just fucked up. We're fucked up. So don't slap them a bunch. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's with a piece of flank stick. Yeah. <laughs> God, well, that would help me as a boy. Yeah. Now, do you like, is it good? Like, do you think he should like lean into it a little bit and be like, make them meals that look like people? I think no. Nope. Why not? I think that continues to strengthen the fantasy. Now, what if one of uh, someone like this showed up to one of your cannibal parties? Oh, when I do the cannibal parties? Yeah. I will gladly, obviously, you know, I'll take their ticket money. Yeah. And I'll take a picture with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a therapist. Yeah. You know, I can't get in there. If they told me they weren't actually a cannibal and they're doing this as a dry run. I've been I'd... waiting to eat somebody for years, Henry Zabrowski. And I'd be like, hey, buddy, you know, welcome to the club. I'm glad you're here doing this in this way. Because if you can get out of your system... Eating a bunch of prosciutto shaped like a butt, mm-hmm. no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. And if you can just eat it that way, that should have been fine. the name of that guy's chicken fuck bus. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's all harm, all harm, all, all foul. All yeah. Harm, all foul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we got with these a lot of videos. There's a lot of like. I think we did enough. Yeah. I think we've done enough today. You've done enough. I think we've done enough. Can I do a quick plug? Please. Um, I'm going to be doing stand-up tomorrow night in Burbank at the Moose Lodge. You lucky, lucky boy. Oh, my God. There's a new stand-up show. Vintage comedy. I don't know what to expect. I'm part of a, a bunch of comics are doing some time. I'm Who's always, hosting? Um, Corey Jacobs is hosting. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, he uh, he owns Yes Baby Vintage and oh, Burbank cool. yes, and stuff yes, like that. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. Um, but, yeah, the, the Burbank Moose Lodge Vintage Comedy 8 p.m., $10. Come on down. I'm doing like 10 minutes. Come Maybe I'll run the light a little bit. You know, come check it out. I'll shake some hands. I fucking love to see you guys. Uh, that's Thursday night. Um, what is that? The 27th of you know, June. I'm going to reach out to our listeners and see who's out there in the New York comedy scene because Eddie and I want to do a goddamn bar show when we're in town. Yes. <laughs> we want to do a good New York bar. And so that's the thing. It has to be good. Yeah. Like, it can't suck. I so mean, you have to look at I it. miss the shitty shows. That's no. why I'm doing the Moose Lodge. I like a shitty show that's good. <laughs> that's what I want. I want a shitty show that's good. So I did, did yeah. book us on your shitty show that's actually very good. Yeah, two, we need two microphones. We yes. We need two microphones. Because we really want to do something when Henry we're in town. when he talks. I talk like a professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to no. live every day. Yeah. Begging to be booked in a basement. In the worst section of the one of the worst cities in the world. Yeah. And no. you love the fact that when you get out on that stage, those hipsters, they might look at you like you're the world's oldest man, but they don't know that you invented the laughter <laughs> that they are experiencing. All right. And they're going to have to l- live with the fact that they weren't there all in right. 2006 when we began it all. I mean, we started before that. I'm just saying what they know. Right. Yeah, as far it started as these in two thousand three, but they don't fucking understand anything yeah. in terms of these fucking movies. So that show about. is going to be at the King's Theater December seventh, and so we're looking for our gig on Sunday night, on December eighth. Fuck it. Well, I was saying, yeah, because well, Friday night we're going to be in Philly. Friday night we're in Philly doing Side Stories Live December six. I think that's yeah. sold out, but uh, maybe there might be a ticket or two left. Um, also going to be doing Side Stories Live on September thirteenth in Chicago at the. Um, Park West, which is a beautiful theater. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so December 8th, all right? Casey James Salengo, I know you listen, you fuck. Casey James Salengo, yeah. Yeah, he hit me up. He all hit right, me well, up. Yeah, get us on a show, Casey. All right, fuckers. December 8th. All right, I go, love you guys. Go to patreon.com slash last podcast on the left to watch us talk on last podcast on the left. You will like it. And there's many other fun-ass shit. We got BTS stuff that's flowing. It's really, really good. He's li- listening to No Dogs in Space. Comes out tomorrow. And it's wearing back the, He's wearing Ken. the merch. Yeah, the, the new Can series is finally coming out. Can't wait for you guys to see that. They've been working real hard on it. Go to twitch.tv slash LPNTV to see all of our Twitch shows. You're fading. This is good. Listen to the brighter side. We should get out of here before your fucking lungs explode. Glass podcast on the left.com for tour tickets. If you, if you can even handle how good it is, and go on to YouTube, Good Podcast is live. 
Yes. The good podcast is live. Dude, a lot of things are fucking shaking down over here. We're working on a lot of stuff. It's crazy. We're making a lot of stuff. July 11th is going to be the Hoopa Goo Goo game special. Yes, we're going to be gonna starting be our actual, like, we're making our own fucking, d- 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 it's a game show. It's going to be the brighter side versus page seven on Hoopa Goo Goo game. So go check out Good Put, go check out all, the, we're fucking shooting, dude. We got our fucking stuff going, man. And tonight on Twitch, you can watch uh, Brighter Side Live yeah. at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's fun. Right before that. Yeah. All right. Be good, you guys. Hail Satan. Peace. Bye. Absolute Territory? Is that what it's called? Absolute Territory. Send in your best depictions of Absolute Territory for Eddie at side stories no, at LPOTL. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know. I want it, I like it in the wild. I don't like it presented.